Hey guys, a lot of you have been asking me about my CNC lathe and when I'm going to do an update video on it. So I am going to do an update video on it, but I'm going to remake it. I really, really don't like the design of the base. It's garbage. I'm going to take it apart and I'm going to show you exactly what's wrong with it. Um, and then we're going to remake it and I'm actually going to do it on video this time. I did the last build on Instagram, so people who follow me on Instagram will probably be a lot more familiar with the build, but we're going to go through it again on YouTube and hopefully that will be fairly entertaining. So I want to make it out of epoxy granite. It's an excellent material for damping, it's adequate for strength, and it's something I can cast at home without having a giant foundry. Epoxy is easy enough to get, but getting granite crushed the right size is not so easy. Your options are basically to order it special online, say I need granite, it's got to be this kind of granite, it's got to be 5mm crush. The funny thing about shipping granite is it's pretty expensive. Um, the next option I have is that granite's actually very common. They use granite all over my neighborhood as decorative stones. And that would be totally fine. It's just that it's all the wrong size. So I'd have to crack open a beer and sit outside with a hammer and crush this down to size. Um, or I could, I don't know, make a teeny tiny rock crusher or something, but that would just be silly. So I think what I'm probably going to do is get on the phone with a supplier who doesn't want to deal with me and maybe try to get a sample order, less than five tons of five millimeter crush. Oh my god! So you may be wondering how I put this little monstrosity together. Basically centered around this half inch wall steel box. So you can see I've got ends cut out, I've got sides cut out, and this more or less just screws together from the ends like this. I found that there's almost nothing more addicting than stencils, so that was pretty interesting. So I guess the first part of putting this together is going to be to go over the mechanism. So this is the moving jaw assembly. It's basically permanently put together, otherwise I would take it apart and show how it goes together. You can see it's eccentric here by about half a millimeter. So if this rotates and this is just pinned in place, it's not going to go anywhere because it's going to want to push the moving jaw down and this is going to stop it. So we actually have to add a degree of freedom here. So what I did is I put this sort of uh, rocker link in the bottom. I'm going to stop and say right here, this is not my idea. This is how a lot of jaw crushers are made. Some of them even have adjustable links at the bottom here. I'm about to show you the first goof of this design. This rocker link here, it actually catches on these radii. Now these radii were designed to be smaller, I just didn't use that end mill so they're a little too large. I didn't think it would be a problem, but this does contact up here. So what I had to do is actually grind away some material. So it has to face upright. This has all been fixed on the drawing package that I will put up on my Patreon in the next couple of days, but it's something I have to live with anyways. Alright, now that's all tightened up. You can see I use set screws in here. Um, set screws are just convenient. They're not necessarily the ideal um, fastening method for every situation. One problem with set screws in this orientation is that gravity is pushing down this way. So if this thing starts vibrating, these set screws are going to want to work loose and fall out. I'm not too worried about that because even if they do, this pin doesn't really have any reason to go anywhere. So I think I'm just going to leave it as is for now and maybe check every now and then. So the next thing I did, I put this uh, pillow block on the outside. Now, pillow blocks are widely available and they're super cheap. The only problem is a half inch bearing pillow block is huge. So I decided to make my own out of aluminum. The large pillow blocks are probably designed with some safety factor in mind, especially given the dynamic load of the bearings is quite high. But I didn't really need that safety factor in this case since I'll be the only one using it. Obviously, if this was going to someone else, I'd be a lot safer. Um, so I'm just gonna put this mechanism in here. And uh, this journal down here actually lines up with an oil light bushing, so I'm just going to press that in. Please don't crush your hand. Okay, there's that part. There. It's not, not super smooth, but there it is. Um, so you can see the main action of the jaw now is it uh, kind of chews. It's got like an instantaneous center of rotation right about here. So you imagine the force is magnified a whole bunch um, and that's basically how it goes about crushing things. Okay, so now we've got that together. So this is the other side, it's actually the exact same as the first side. 
which I consider a huge convenience because if I'm doing drawings, I only have to do one drawing, which is awesome. Um, the other thing is it's just uh, easier to keep track of things if you're not mirroring your parts because you, you'll get things backwards and it's a little tedious to realize you've made that mistake. So I'm going to take another one of these pillow blocks I made. And I've got these uh, stainless steel M6 screws here. And I've got one here that's got some white paint on it. I'm just going to screw these in place lightly at first. So a few people have actually commented that um, stainless steel galvanically corrodes with a lot of different metals, especially aluminum. Stainless steel really is a troublemaker for galvanic corrosion. It's at one extreme of the galvanic series, which means it reacts with just about everything, especially aluminum. I've never had a problem with aluminum because I don't do a lot of sheet metal stuff. So if you're going to have stainless steel fasteners on sheet metal and maybe in a corrosive environment, you may actually end up corroding through the sheet metal. But for the stuff I'm doing, it's really not a problem. It's a fairly thick section and I'm not really looking for 100 year lifetime. So uh, I'm okay with it. Looks like the bearing got a little loose in here, so I'm going to tighten these up and squish the bearing back in. Okay, so I'm going to leave this bearing loose because I want to put it together and I don't want it to be over constrained. Okay, so let's work that on. Okay, there we go. You'll notice that this bushing happily found its center, so there's no need to worry about that. Now I'm going to start putting some M5 screws in here. I said earlier that these parts are identical. I misspoke. Um, they are actually mirrored just on these countersinks. I think in the drawings I did, I didn't do a countersink. Um, it won't look as nice, but it makes the parts the same. So if you're going to plasma cut these or something, you'd use the same part. If you want to countersink them after, then that's up to you, I guess. All right, so you can see we've got both sides on here now. Now what I'm going to do is take the fixed jaw and I'm just going to put this in here. Um, the tolerances aren't typically critical on something like this. The only thing I wanted to make sure of is that, oh, dog hair, um, this side wasn't too far off from the width of the, uh, the fixed jaw sort of support here, because I want to be able to squeeze this in and really pinch that jaw to hold it in place. I don't want to rely on sort of the friction from the underside of the washer, which is what I was actually originally planning to do. So these are shoulder bolts. I'm just going to push those through. And this was actually designed to offer me some adjustment for um, um, crush size. So plain old nuts just go on the end like this. And now it's uh, there, sort of an adjustable fixed jaw built in there. If I were to do this again, I would just use plain old um, 1 half 13 bolts through here. Shoulder screws was probably a bit excessive. Oh, a wrench. Forgive me. So now if we look down here, you can see the last thing the rocks are going to see. Um, so you'll notice I still haven't tightened up these uh, pillow blocks yet. I just want to sort of let it run through its motion uh, and feel for tight spots. And I'll sort of incrementally tighten this as I go. Uh, I do this for a lot of assemblies and it, it sort of just lets the, uh, the mechanism settle in the position it wants to settle, but more importantly in a position that it runs smoothly. Uh, there's sort of a whole trick to doing that with linear bearings that'll make them almost perfectly parallel. Um, I'm hoping to go over that soon. Someone was asking me for my 3D printer how I did that. It's um, a lot of tightening sequence stuff, but anyways. It's a little bit tight, but once the flywheel and the pulley are on, it's not a big deal at all. Speaking of which, uh, I know my motor is going to go on this side, so pulley goes on there. So for this pulley, I had a piece of uh, four inch by one inch, like off cut kind of. And um, I actually bored a one inch hole through the middle and I made these bushings to go in. I can't actually take these bushings out because I turned the outside from that inside diameter. So they're kind of fixed there. But uh, yeah, you can see I just, it's sort of a 
a quick and easy way of putting a hub on one of these. And again, I got a set screw. This is definitely not the right place for a set screw. This is uh, this is definitely a keyway kind of situation. Set screw is not very strong for holding things, especially oscillating loads, which I think a rock crusher is basically the definition of an oscillating load. So, um, yeah. But um, we'll see how it goes, and if it needs replacing, I'll replace it. I think that might be too short, maybe. The other thing you'll notice is this isn't a real set screw, it's a socket head cap screw. I do that sometimes just so I can get more torque out of it. It'll throw the balance a little bit, but it's a rock crusher and it's got bigger things to worry about. The last piece is the flywheel. Now this is the project I was actually going to use the weight plate flywheel for, and it did kind of work, but um, I ended up getting this sort of $20 piece of steel and it works a lot better. This is 1045. And uh, I did the exact same thing with the uh, hub in the middle, and that's so I have somewhere to put a set screw. And <laughs> for the third time, set screw is not the right thing to use here. Definitely some sort of a keyway or a locking bushing or even a cross pin would be probably useful here. So, anyways, there. So here's the sort of unit put together. Um, it gets a cover. I'm not going to put the cover on just for convenience, I guess, but I have noticed from using this thing that it pops rocks all over the place. So you'd probably want to use a cover if you ever used it. All right, so that's how it is put together. Um, so for the motor, I ended up using a half horsepower fan motor. Fan is in from a furnace. Um, the power is all there, but because it's from a fan, it's basically not continuous duty cycle, so it's going to want cooling. It'll want a fan attached to it. I am not going to use this for continuous duty quarrying, so I think this should be okay. You'll notice here I included this ingenious high-speed steel anti-rotation feature. Uh, I also left it razor sharp as an anti-tampering device. I may put this together off camera because it's a bit uh, cumbersome. All right, motor is on. You'll notice almost immediately that I put this pulley on backwards. I guess the best way to make sure something is idiot proof is to have an idiot assemble it. Uh, there we go. That's nice. So. This uh, spacing is already defined. I consistently throughout all of my builds seem to think I can get away without using a pulley tensioner. I really needed a pulley tensioner here. This is ridiculous. I had to position this ahead of time. I kind of got a rocket on. Um, it should be fine for now, but it's not going to be sustainable for like wear adjustment and stuff. So this uses a 220J pulley. Uh, this is the same pulley as in the headstock of my lathe. Yes, I'm going to do a video on that soon. So, uh, the tensioning mechanism is actually the flange bending a little bit and lifting the motor up. I've seen the motor weight used as a tensioner before. It's actually a fairly, a fairly elegant solution for things that are going to be in the same orientation. The tag lathe uses it, for example. Um, yeah, so there we are. So, motor is already wired up. Now... Let's hope the lights don't go out. There we go. So we can uh, crush some rocks there. Alright guys, well hopefully you enjoyed me putting that together. I'm going to show some footage of actually using it now because I got to get some rocks crushed for this granite uh, lathe base. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. Cheers.